Hello friends. So I know there's a rather large recent influx of new players. So here's a big old video with a couple of tips, suggestions for options, and an explanation of systems the game doesn't explain to you. Or at least, they're things I don't recall the game telling me. Reading your skill potencies and learning if you should AoE or single target at two enemies. The simplest way to think of potency is that it shows how much damage each skill will do compared to all the other skills on a job. AoE skills show how much potency of damage you'll be doing to each target it hits. So when do you start using your AoE skills? All jobs in the game should be using their AoE skills at 3 or more enemies. But at 2 enemies it's a different story. Some jobs, like Warrior, use their AoE rotation but their single target gauge spender. Some jobs, like Ninja, will use their single target rotation but AoE gauge spender. And some jobs, like Red Mage, will mix their rotation and do both. If you don't know what to use, just look at your potency numbers. More damage always wins. If you're playing a caster job, learn to slide cast. So you do not need to wait till the cast bar finishes to be able to move as a magical DPS or a healer. It uh, kinda depends on your connection, but for me, I can safely start moving at about 0.5 seconds and the spell will still go off. You should be using this to pre-position yourself for mechanics before they go off, or if your movement skills just aren't ready yet. You'll have to practice slide casting yourself and learn when you can move. Now let's talk about Limit Break. So by default, the Limit Break bar will appear here on your screen. You'll get one bar when you're in a party of 4 to 7 and it upgrades to two bars when you're fighting a boss. And you'll get two bars by default in a party of 8 which upgrades to three bars when you're in a boss. How do you use this? By using the limit break button, which you really, really should put somewhere on your hotbar. You can find it here under the actions and trait window under general. So let's quickly explain what limit break is, how it works and when to use it. Limit break is a shared party resource, meaning you do not just press this. If you do, then nobody else in your party can. And some limit breaks are dumpster garbage. So yeah. Each role has a unique limit break. Let's go over that. Tanks. They have a defensive limit break. So when do you use these? Nearly never. Tanks only limit break during specific fights when the fight pretty much forces you to use it or you'll wipe. In high-end content, tank limit breaks are also sometimes used to cheese mechanics, but beyond that, you will practically never press this. Healers, they have a healing limit break. Shocker. Limit break 1 and 2, never ever use these. Limit break 3, on the other hand, is used to save pools after a big disaster mess. So if 4 plus of your party members die and you have Limit Break free ready, it is the healer's job to use it. In normal content, you'll often see people intentionally not using Limit Break when it hits free bars till the boss is about roughly 10% of his HP. This is mostly because nobody trusts anyone else not to screw up and kill half the party. So uh, yeah, again, lots of deaths means it's immediately the healer's job to limit break. Ranged physical DPS limit break and magical DPS limit break. These two have different shaped limit breaks, the range being a much longer column, whereas the magical DPS is a circle. They do the exact same amount of damage and are used for the exact same thing. These two roles should always be the one limit breaking when there are two or more enemies that can be hit. So in dungeons, please, 
please consider limit breaking large mob pulls. Sure, you can hit the boss with it, but your limit break will do a ton more damage to a large collection of mobs and will even do more damage than a melee limit break. Speaking of which, melee DPS limit breaks. You are the default limit breaker in a single target fight. So basically every single boss fight. When you have free bars of limit break and you trust your party to not die to mechanics, feel free to use it to do a huge chunk of damage. This is by far the strongest single target ability in the game. I have better gear so shouldn't I be the one limit breaking? Limit break actually takes into account every single person on your party's weapon damage, not just yours. So it doesn't at all matter who presses the limit break button. If you're in the same category, it'll do the exact same damage. And if your party melee isn't limit breaking when the boss is nearly dead, please feel free to use it yourself. Now let's talk about the Hall of the Novice. Eventually the game will lead you to this area, but I don't remember if it makes you do these. I don't think it does, but I highly advise you do them. However, this place is horrifically outdated and doesn't tell you near enough. But even so, I would still suggest doing them. Doing all the missions in there for a roll will get you the brand new ring. This grants you a 50% experience bonus when you are level 50 and below, and is easily the best ring you'll have through those levels on every single job. You'll also get the brand new armor set for your roll, which is really strong for its level. Speaking of novice stuff, the novice network. So when you start out, you'll have this little leaf next to your name. This means you're a sprout which basically just means you're new. Because of this, you may end up getting invited to what is called the Novice Network, which is a total crapshoot. I hear some servers have fantastic Novice Networks, full of helpful people giving advice, and others are, well, hot garbage. It really depends on your server, since it's full of other players and player-driven. The original intent was for a new player to ask question and get advice from players with the crowns, known as mentors. But uh, yeah, in my experience, it's not that helpful, but your mileage may vary. In my opinion, it is way better for you to find a free company and ask questions and advice in them. The simplest way to think of free companies is to think of them as guilds. A group of people who play the game together or people who have something in common that binds them together. Because of that, they're almost always going to have people who want to help you or people who are just far more willing and likely to help you if you ask for it. Being in a free company also gives you two additional buffs. It depends what they have active, but the usual ones is a 10% experience buff to everything you kill and a 50% teleportation cost reduction. So uh, yeah, further incentive to join one, save money and level faster. Unsinking older content. If you open the duty finder and select this undersized party option, you'll go into the duty at your current level and gear level. This is what most people do when they're farming all the content for mounts or specific loot. You will seriously blow up the fights this way. Some incredibly useful keyboard shortcuts and settings that will make your life easier. So let's start with useful default shortcuts. Pressing the zero key on your numpad when you have nothing selected, will target the nearest NPC or object to your character. Pressing it again will activate what it selects. So to open a chest or talk to an NPC, just double tap zero. A second option for this is, by default, the X key. 
This will hide all player names and make them untargetable. You will definitely be using one of these options if you get to the point where you're playing newly dropped content with patches. Useful options in character configuration. If you open up your character configuration window, go to the control settings tab and character, you can turn down the insane laser light show that is this game. I would personally advise putting everyone else on show limited and yourself on show all. This way you'll actually be able to see the boss. Using show limited will allow you to still see things like DPS ground placement effects and healer ground placement effects that you should stand in. In the same window I would go to the UI settings general tab and I would then turn off those all recommendations and play guides that pop in when you log in and never use. Talking about annoying, you should probably go to the log window setting and turn off these free options. You will thank me later when you don't get that annoying beeping sound. I will change how tab targeting works immediately. By default it's on cycle through enemies nearest to furthest, but this is a lie. When you have nothing selected like I do here and you press tab it'll target the nearest enemy, which is this little sheepy here, so nothing will always target that. If on the other hand I had an enemy selected and I press tab, it will not target the nearest enemy it'll target the leftmost enemy on my screen and then it'll cycle towards the right so it'll target this ice sprite, that sheep, this sheep, this sheep, then this sheep and that wolf because I think it's on my screen still. So. so even if I was standing right on top of this guy and this is the one I want to attack it'll target this ice sprite first and then cycle towards the right. Which um, I personally don't think is very useful. So I would advise changing how it works by making tab the target nearest enemy option, which uh, makes tab targeting quite a lot easier. Now let's talk about meta. Technically it exists. I mean, if there is any difference between the jobs, there will always be a meta. Balance is hard, but Final Fantasy XIV has done a very good job with it, and those numbers are very close. The best job for any fight will always be the job that you most enjoy. Chances are, if you love playing a job, you'll probably be pretty good at it or you will have the drive to become really good at it. So what you should do is learn the job you love's rotation. There is really only one correct way to play each job in this game. Yes, there are different openers depending on which fight you're doing, and you can play slightly differently depending on how your party plays, but generally the theory crafted openers are the openers you should be using. They've been mapped out by your local wizards. Please learn them and use them. Personally, I find the best website to learn that stuff is Salted XIV. They have guides from the balance up there in a fantastic, easy to read format. Practicing your rotation. So there's the obvious of just going to one of the various target dummies all over the world, but 
sometimes you want to practice your opener over and over and you really don't want to waste time waiting for all your cooldowns to come up. Well, for that, there's Stone Sky Sea. You'll find it at these locations. Talk to the NPC there and select a fight. After you've finished your opener, simply talk to the NPC in the area to leave and re-enter to try your open again. This will reset your cooldowns each time and is the quickest way to practice. And with that, I'll bring this random collection of tips and tricks for new players to a close. I hope you found a few things in here that are useful to you, and I hope you have a blast and fun time in Final Fantasy XIV. But for now, goodbye my friends, and have a great day. Boom, 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 boom.